How's it going people, Sam and Slappy here. And today we are going to be showcasing Damonheim within the RuneScape lore. We're also going to be covering what the Marjorie Bilrak did during this time, as he kind of plays a very prominent role throughout the history of Damonheim itself. So it would be remiss of me not to actually follow Bilrak's discoveries. So let's get started. Damonheim is a massive dungeon found beneath an equally huge ancient castle located on an icy peninsula in the eastern side of the wilderness. Most of Damonheim's history is told through us through the chronicles of Bilrak himself, as there's very few actual accounts from those days besides some very ancient and powerful beings. Currently, an army of Fremenix have set up camp in the area to prepare for the next giant expedition into these enormous labyrinths below this castle. An evil and malevolent taint is currently present within Daemonheim. The Fremenic have set up a quarantine to prevent anyone from taking items in or out of the castle. This hopefully is to prevent this evil malevolent taint from spreading across the face of Gilinor and threatening life as we know it. However, some have actually managed to smuggle items out, and some have even got them available for a certain price of Dungeoneering tokens. So that is pretty much Daemonheim in a nutshell, but that is what we know recently. The Fremenic have moved in, they've set up camp to try and quarantine this malevolent kind of aura within the Daemonheim itself. But what do we know of Daemonheim throughout the history? Well, not much is actually known about the history of the area prior to Bilrak's arrival. The architecture of the castle itself kind of suggests that it may have been actually built and used by the Dragonkin. Now, if you don't know what the Dragonkin or who the Dragonkin are, the Dragonkin are a race of powerful and intelligent dragon-like creatures created by Jazz, an Elder God, some time previous to the First Age. The Dragonkin were powerful and malevolent creatures. They spread destruction wherever they went. However, humans throughout history, such as the hero Robert the Strong, eventually drove them back to their stronghold where they are currently plotting their return. Nevertheless though, there are currently about a dozen active dragonkin. Three of them are protecting the Stone of Jazz, with another being known to reside on Fossil Island. In battle, the dragonkin have been seen to use melee magic and have an exceptionally powerful dragon breath. The dragonkin then are an ancient and very powerful race tasked by an elder god themselves to protect the Stone of Jazz, not the kind of race to be messed with. But since a dragonkin statue can be found at the top of the stairs within Daemonheim on the first floor, and the fact that there are pillars with what seems like dragonkin faces on them outside, the original purpose of the castle is likewise largely unknown due to a massive lack of written records during the time of its construction. Though we do believe it dates back to at least the time of the God Wars though. The Marjorah Bilrak wrote in one of his journals that he also surmised that this castle may have actually been built by the Dragonkin as well as used by them. But even Bilrak himself still doesn't know why they left this place and also doesn't know the reason for them leaving it. So Daemonheim already is a mystery to us. But long after this castle was built though, the Marjorah Bilrak, who at the time was largely affiliated with Zamorak, 
began digging the dungeons of Damenheim in the year 1225 of the Fourth Age. During this time, he enslaved a large number of followers, including humans, giants, and hobgoblins, all in order for him to reach an area known as the Rift. So, the Rift is a cross-dimensional portal which currently resides deep below the castle of Damenheim. Not very much is known about the history of the Rift, but it's known that the Majra Bilrak was searching for it for an immensely long period of time. He, along with Lucian's daughter, Moya, entered the Rift where they encountered Zamorak. While Moya later returned in the Battle of Lumbridge, Bilrak has yet to return. According to Bill Rag and his notes, the rift is a place where the barrier between the realms are weakened. He wants to make, a, well, take advantage of this in order to bring back Zamorak to Gilinor from the realm he currently resided in. Bill Rag also used the rift's weak barriers to unleash many fierce monsters, like the Stalkers, Behemoths, and Calgarian demons. He uses those monsters to guard the dungeons he creates while digging towards this rift. The rift is believed to be an area where the space is unstable and where the boundaries between said dimensions are very weak. Possibly, what Bilrak believed, would be located miles beneath Damonheim. To this day, it continuously distorts Bilrak's tunnels, causing their layouts to be random each time they are visited. It also created new plants, metals, and entirely unfounded species of fish, all of which have been tainted by the Rift's malevolent magic. Bilrak's plan was to dig towards this Rift, and at the time unleash his master Zamrock who had recently been banished by Guthix from the land of Gilinor. In order to acquire the resources necessary for the construction of this massive dungeon network, Bilrak also uncovered several remote locations, hidden from the rest of the world, which, to the adventurers and general populace today, are known as resource dungeons. Among these dungeons included resources such as rocks, wood, and different followers, these dungeons were sealed off with the same type of magic used in the construction of the rest of Damonheim. Thus, you need a certain amount of experience within Damonheim's dungeons itself in order to enter these fabled resource dungeons. To ensure that no one followed Bilrak into his tunnels, he filled his tunnels with enormous traps and puzzles and experimented with portal magic to acquire even more followers such as the Calgarian demons, stalkers, and behemoths to guard the tunnels he dug. Currently, an enormous dungeon network below the castle. Unfortunately, during one of his portal experiments, he accidentally opened a portal leading to the realm of the Garajo people, a magical tribe of humanoids. The Garajo were strictly against necromancy and demon summoning, and attempted to stop him. Today, several members of the Garajo can still be found within the dungeons themselves, such as the Divine Skinweaver and the Enigmatic Horde Stalker. In the year 169 of the Fifth Age, a strange power washed over the entirety of Gilinor. Every single human was lifted into the air and faced directly towards Damonheim all with some strange red mist circling around them. After the annual Marjara ritual of rejuvenation that same year, the Zerosian Wahisiatl revealed that the disturbance was caused by the death of a Marjara. In all likelihood, we believe it to be Bilrak. The power drew the attention of the Fremenic tribe. Of those, seers were able to easily pinpoint the source of this power that washed over the land. So, in turn, the Fremenic decided to send an army to investigate the source of this immense power. 
After arriving at the castle, now known as Daemonheim, they gave the dungeons beneath the current Hain, which actually is Daemonheim, which loosely translates to demon halls. Although, as Thok, the self-proclaimed master of dungeoneering, he says that the dungeons contain much more terrifying creatures than demons. The discovery of Daemonheim itself also attracted an immense number of adventurers and mercenaries from all over the world. Today, the Fremenic, along with the mass people of the adventuring type, support them and are raiding these dungeons floor by floor, trying to reach the source of this immense power that once washed the land. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what happened during the time of Daemonheim, rather loosely covering quite a lot of information there. So let's go into Bilrak himself then, as he played a massive role within the discovery of Daemonheim himself, as well as architecting it, as making all these dungeons himself in order to find this immense power from this rift. So let's get into a bit of Bilrak. Bilrak is a Marjara, fiercely loyal to Zamorak, with Azanadra referring to him as Zamorak's lapdog. Bilrak led an army of humans and other races, using them to dig and construct the dungeons of Daemonheim in search of the rift, a place where the barrier between planes is weakened, and where he believed his god Zamorak was said to have resided. He is also the responsible per party for the arrival of many twisted creatures found within Daemonheim. In the early days, the Marjara were brought to Gilinor from the Marjara's own realm of Ferneske. This was done by Ekthlarin, a menified god. He brought them in to fight the advancing armies of Zaros within the Caridian's erosion war. While it is unknown whether or not Bilrak was among these Marjara at the time. With their help, the Menophytes actually won the war, but after a dispute with Ikthlarin, Sliske abandoned him and allied himself with Zaros instead, with his kin soon following after, Bilrak included. They were Zaros's most valuable troops, but some grew discontent with the god's regime and decided to rally against him. The leader of these Marjara, and other rebels was Zamorak, who with the aid of the Stone of Jazz, as well as the power from the Staff of Armadil, defeated Zaros, and used his power to ascend to godhood himself, but was later banished by the gods. Bilrak was one of many who followed Zamorak. When Zamorak returned, now the God of Chaos, he attempted to reclaim the Stone of Jazz from Saradomin, who had stolen it, thus beginning the God Wars of the Third Age. Not much is known about Bilrak and his role during the God Wars. In the Chronicles of Bilrak, it is revealed that it was actually Bilrak that created the demon Krill Suratoth, and summoned him to this plane to be used as a general within Zamorak's army during the God Wars. He also claims in his notes that he is Zamorak's second in command. In the Dungeon Ewing skill, you, the player, and many adventurers alike can find books and journals known as the Chronicles of Bilrak, and through these it appears that he is responsible for constructing the tunnels at Daemonheim. He ends his messages with the phrase, Zamorak be praised. During his entries, he also calls Zamorgal a fool who underestimates his skill, meaning maybe Bilrak is only going along with Zamorgal to disguise his power, or possibly the power source he was seeking. However, the 24th Chronicle of Bilrak reveals that he is attempting to reach the rift deep in the earth, a place where the barrier between realms thins which he believes he could use to travel to the realm Zamorak resides in and release him back once more into Gilinor itself. Since Bilrak is responsible for the summoning of various monsters within Daemonheim and has also converted the Calgarian demons to his will, it is possible 
that he has reached a state of power comparable to Lucian's. On the other hand though, it is possible that Bilrak has been led on throughout his journey in Daemonheim. It seems he has been guided by whispers, and that he has thought to have been Zamorak all along. Many chronicles reference to these whispers, and you may begin to hear what they were when dungeoning on an occult floor. Bilrak is also responsible for the release of the Garajo tribe in Daemonheim. In the year 1890 of the Fourth Age, while Bilrak was opening portals somewhere in the 36th to 47th floor, he accidentally opened a portal to the realm of these sentient beings. At first, he attempted to convert them, but they instantly became his enemies upon seeing his dark and cruel methods. He strongly hates this race for their constant meddling within his affairs. Remoki exiles may be converted Garajo of sworn allegiance to Bilrak, and thus may possibly be traitors to the Garajo tribe. Nadia, one of the Fremenic sagas you can play, documents Moya's search for Bilrak following some unusual marks appearing around the ritual marker. A year before the current date, Moya finds Daemonheim and manages to infiltrate the area through use of various disguises. Upon reaching the occult floors, she starts to find portals that offer her some form of power boosting her life and magic abilities. At the end of the saga, Moya encounters Bilrak in a room with the ritual Marga. At first, he appears quite insane. He cannot make a coherent sentence. But after some further conversations, he suddenly becomes sane. He explains that the portals provide a great source of power restoration than the ritual of rejuvenation does thus making him far, far more powerful than any other Marjara. And that he's actually preparing to rule Gilinor once enough Marjara slay each other. However, what happens between Moira and Bilrak? The players are actually given a choice. So, whether potentially Bilrak was the one that died and formed the red mist that sh shrouded all humans within Gilinor itself, and whether or not your choices within this Fremenic saga may actually reveal what Moya truly did during this time, could play a prominent role, as your choice is, is capture Bilrak and take him back to Lucian, which we know did not happen, but there were two very interesting choices available. One was that Moya would join forces with Bilrak and they would both continue to delve deeper into Daemonheim to find this rift and release the master, Zamorak. The other, however, was Moya going along with Bilrak and pretending to cooperate. And once Moya had built up enough strength or learnt the ways to gain more strength, she would slay Bilrak. Now, we don't actually know what happened but what we do know is with the Sixth Age on us, and the Battle of Lumbridge present, Moya is with Zamorak. She is actually on the battlefield itself. So, did they actually manage to reach Zamorak together? Or did Moya actually betray and slaughter Bilrak, and then return into Zamorak's side? Hopefully, we'll find out later. Back onto Bilrak then. Bilrak did not attend the 18th Ritual of Rejuvenation. When speaking to Wahiseatl, after completing the Ritual of the Marjara quest, he will discuss the strange power that occurred before Dungeoneering was released, and confirmed that the strange power was a case of the wrong Marjara being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that it was such a waste of power. This hints that either Bilrak or Moya perished upon reaching the rift deep within Daemonheim. Which one might have perished? Uh, we can assume it must be Bilrak as Moya can be found within RuneScape today. Although it is revealed in the Book of Zamorak 
the Moya left Gillenor from Damonheim and went to a different plane where she met someone she believes to be Zamorak himself. This would imply that it is truly Bilrak who died. However, this cannot be seen as certain, as it is unknown exactly what transpired at the bottom of Damonheim. But seeing as Moya is alive and well, and the newest general of Zamorak, it may be assumed that it had been, in fact, Bilrak who truly had died. So now you know a little bit of Bilrak's life. He started off just as the other Majora, as helping the Ekthlarin and the Menophyte gods in their wars against the Zerosians. Later switching sides to Zaros himself, and then teaming up with their leader Zamorak, and overthrowing Zaros. And soon after Zarak was banished, Bilrak went searching for power and a way to get back to his god, Zamorak, and in turn explored Daemonheim itself. Which brings us to the Chronicles of Bilrak. I've mentioned them a few times throughout this so far. But what are the Chronicles of Bilrak himself, and what do they actually tell you? Well, the Chronicles of Bilrak are journal pages found during Dungeoneerin, which can be read, and later reread by talking to the Dungeoneerin tutor if you so wish. They're used to educate the reader on the history of Daemonheim itself. The various entries written by Bilrak and Marjara, detailing his travels through Daemonheim's castle dungeons in search of a portal he knows as the Rift. This rift would, in theory, release the Marjara god Zamorak from whatever realm Guthix banished him to after the God Wars, resulting in Zamorak rewarding Bilrak in one way or another. So, with that said, there is quite a number of entries into these pages, in fact there are 30 of them and they date back very close to the day of founding Daemonheim itself, to when he starts to lose the plot. So let's get started. The year is 1225 of the Fourth Age. Finally, after four long years of bringing in weak-minded fools to follow my cause unknowingly, today is the day. The day I begin the Great Descent. Today, my research pays off and the journey begins. Today, I journey down towards ultimate victory. My power is as true as the whispers calling. Today, I begin. Praise be to Zamorak. In the year 1241 of the Fourth Age, after years of evading detection, my research finally finally led me to the castle above. It seems similar to that of the Dragonkin of old, protectors of the artifact, enders of the Great Wars. Of course, I should have suspected it, to be hidden in a manner as straightforward as this. Fools to abandon such a place. Why would they move on? It must all be linked in somehow, but time does not allow for further investigation. My power now is to be used on one thing, and one thing only, forging through the very earth that separates me from my goal. Praise be to Zamorak. In the year 1266 of the Fourth Age, many of the weak-minded servants and slaves are moving with me as I go deeper. What curiosity or purpose drives them? I didn't even have to force many of them. I cannot dwell. As much as I hate to admit it, I need them for now. I must have the rear guards and the servants to dig the early sections out. I won't be wasting any of my power doing this. I'll save myself for a challenge worthy of me taking a more frontal role. For now, I'll have to settle for the role of slave driver. Praise be to Zanrag. The year 1285 of the Fourth Age. There's been acceptable progress since my last entry, but still I crave for more. 
but I'll have to work on reawakening my lost power, while my mighty slumber restored a large chunk of my power. It was once again lost in my great search for this place. Evading detection also required some interesting methods and many disguises, which has again left me drained. I have faith. In time, my full power will return once more, and when it does, I shall break through the world with such a fury as to make him proud. Praise be to Zamorak. The year 1313 of the Fourth Age. Those fools. I pity the imbeciles of my kind. To think they looked down on me and doubted the extent of my power. Pathetic. Zamorigal. If you could only see me now, you would not be so quick to judge my abilities. I have no doubt that he'll be wasting his time on some lost cause for power that he'll never obtain. They'll see my true strength in due time. They'll see who will be sacrificed. They'll tremble at the mention of my name. Zamorak be praised. The year 1324 of the Fourth Age. The area I've broken into below is beginning to exude more heat. It might even be suitable for my minions to dwell here to more efficiently serve my cause. Those who refuse to move here out of fear of my power I will just force or kill. They dare not question my rule. They dare not stand up to a Marjara. They dare not question me, Bilrak, their master. Zamorak be praised. The year 1337 of the Fourth Age. The soil I tunnel through is like no other. Someone or something has created this place as some sort of safeguard. Sometimes, when I use my magic to carve through, the areas behind collapse and reappear elsewhere. There is some magical force at play here that is hard to comprehend. Recently, many of my minions were cut off. They said the dungeon I'd forged had a different layout from when they left. On the topic of servants, they're more frail than I feared. The giants last longer, but they can no longer fit into the small tunnels. The human counterparts dig. I'll just slay them all and use their meat to feed the other slaves. <laughs> oh, how I do amuse myself so. Zamorak be praised. 1403 of the Fourth Age. It turns out that I may have actually been right. The area above has begun to cool to freezing. My servants are moving deeper with me. It was pleasant to see them do it voluntarily for a change. <laughs> Perhaps they believe themselves to be with me in this great descent. <laughs> They'll last as long as they use permits. They'll follow me deeper and if they want to survive, as if I'd stop to maintain an area for them to live in. Ah, oh, Zamrak be praised. In the year 1424 of the Fourth Age. If memory serves, I've passed the two century mark of tunneling into this place. I feel the pull of the poor below. If I reach the bottom, great reward will be mine and the world will burst open as I dominate the kingdoms of this frail world. Enough. I must return to my work. I cannot guarantee that I am the only one seeking this, and must beat any who also seek it. As if they could stand up to me. Zamorak be praised. Year 1446 of the Fourth Age Yet more meat sacks have perished under these conditions. Why they insist on sleeping and eating once or twice a week irritates me to no end. They leave me no choice but to mate them up and breed new offspring to continue my journey. The depth I have reached is of a different potency than before. The rock and heat are suitable for simple beings to survive. Obviously a powerful being such as myself has no problem moving on though, but this would probably be the best depth for my slaves to settle so they can serve me more effectively. 
for my purposes only. I will slow my progress to extend a hand in helping them set up. They'll make up for this later. Zamrak be praised. The year 1464 of the Fourth Age. I am as clear of mind as the day I started this descent. My methods and the nature of this place may seem random, but I've yet to use the more dangerous and unstable side of my power. My sanity is still unwavering. Hearing whispers from the earth below is not a sign of my mind breaking. It merely confirms that I am getting closer and should continue downwards. Should I be concerned that the whispers try to guide me? Meh. Zamrak guide me. In the year 1505 of the Fourth Age. Ugh, progress is frustratingly slow as of late. But I suppose it is progress at least. I'm nearing the end with every day and I must retain my focus, my drive. I need that. I need to know what dwells at the bottom. There is only one thing powerful enough that can emanate power across planes of existence. I simply must be correct. Zamrak be praised. In the year 1533 of the Fourth Age. Finally, those fools near the surface, who refused to follow, were forced by their needs to survive. To think I didn't have to lift a hand in the end. <laughs> Today I hear of a mass exodus, all moving down to this depth. I know this is a higher power's doing, bending the will of the world to my cause. I will continue. Zamorak be praised. Year 1573 of the Fourth Age. Forty years have passed since my last entry, and finally, this area is completely self-sustaining. A working chain of production has been created amongst my slaves. The digging should be far more efficient, and more importantly, I have a solid rear guard if any choose to come after me. As if anyone would try to follow me in my footsteps. <laughs> On the subject of slaves, I've had great success in my breeding program. I've taken the strength of the giants, the skin of the goblins, and the size and basic intelligence of a human. And, together, I've created a barely adequate, but much improved slave. Conditioning a sped up progress also. I even bred them to believe pain is good for them. <laughs> They'll literally work until they drop dead where they are. Zamrak be praised. The year 1641 of the Fourth Age. It is fate that significant progress is made on the anniversary of my start date. 400 years of careful destruction and here I am, nearing the halfway mark. If I can make it halfway, I can make it all the way. I swear my power increases the deeper I go. It will not be long before I unleash on this earth. I will be closer to the end than the start. Soon, I will be at the rift. The year 1645 of the Fourth Age. Centuries have passed since I have awoken. But still, there has been no sign or word of the others. Pathetic. I see now why he chose me as his second in command. If the creation and summoning of the mighty Tsutsuroth demon for him wasn't a sign that I am worthy of that title, what am I doing now? None of these others dare to do this. None of the others have power to do this. None of the others have the focus to do this. They saddle for scrabbling around on what is left, and they'll be punished for their lack of faith. Curious. I still feel the presence of Krill in this realm, though. Zamrak be praised. The year 1693 of the Fourth Age. It turns out that I have been rewarded for my time creating the area above for my workers to inhibit. As it will serve as a powerful hub to the surface and help speed my progress. Even so, the fact that they fear the depth below is a concern. Thankfully, I can force a lot of the cowards, but I fear it won't be enough to make a quick progress. The time may be coming for me to use some 
slightly unstable methods. Zamorak be praised. The year 1724 of the Fourth Age. A disgrace. I thought losing servants out of fear to the depths was bad, but now a rebellion? I quashed this before it had a chance. Two treacherous fools dare attack me. History will mark this day. The day of Steer Frostweb and Lexicus Runeright were enslaved by the mighty Bilrak and split for all eternity. They thought the combined magical abilities could stand up to me. You small-minded fools! They will never be together again and will serve my purpose as guards of my great dungeon forever. There will be no further uprisings after that demonstration. Zamorak be praised. Treacherous fools. The year 1730 of the Fourth Age. A new depth has been reached, and it is weak to my magic. Using portal magic should be safe enough here. If the portal network is successful, I can not only dump our waste and effluence into another realm, but I can search for powerful creatures to enslave and defend my great work here. Zamrak be praised. The year 1824 of the Fourth Age. Nearly a century passes, and I have been rewarded. Portal magic was the best move I could have made, and it was reinvigorated my enthusiasm for this project. Not only am I able to draw power from the portals as I once did, but I've managed to enslave ever more powerful and destructive beasts. The Stalkers, the Lumbering Behemoths, and the curiously noble Calgarians are all creatures of my will now defending my great work as if it were their own. Those who search for me and follow my footsteps will have a brutal amount of obstacles to overcome. Now, to find something even more powerful. <laughs> Zamorak be praised. The year 1890 of the Fourth Age. I hazard to call it a disaster, but something grossly unwanted has happened. One of my portals malfunctioned, and a race of troublesome creatures crept through without me noticing. They refer to themselves as the Garajo, and they've maneuvered against me from the very start. The culture despises the reanimation of the dead, and the summoning of demons it seems. The backward fools. While my powers are great, they have a habit of keeping out of sight, so I fear this will be a long fight. Zamrak guide me. In the year 1911 of the Fourth Age. Curse the Garajo! The air here is turgid with magic, and no matter how many times I close a portal to the godforsaken realm, another reopens. Ugh, I've decided to forge on. Those pathetic creatures will pay later. I will reach the rift soon and come back to destroy them once and for all. Zamorak be praised. In the first year of the Fifth Age. I've heard that some are calling this the beginning of the Fifth Age. It would seem suitable if they weren't calling it the Age of Man. Bah! I rename it the Age of Reckoning. I will allow the humans three hours to celebrate, and then we work again. I will not allow them any longer than that. Revelry leads to rebellion, and I cannot afford to massacre them as we get so close. Zamorak be praised. In the fifth year of the fifth age. This is it. The area below is weaker than the bedrock I've been forging through. My magic carves through it like a saw through flesh. This must be fate's reward for seeking the interplanar portal below. The portal that separates me from my master's realm of banishment. To think he could have been banished and contained. Vile trickery. I, Bilrak, will find this rift with the barrier between realms thins. I, Bilrak, will reopen and release my master upon this world once more. I, Bilrak, will release Zamorak. In the year 24 of the Fifth Age.
curse those blasted garage oh. They've wasted more time and progress than I care to expend. Their elders and children will pay for their misdeeds. I vow here and now I will sunder their world with the power I acquired at the bottom of this place. Blast them and their cowardly raids. Their burning and the beams and struts. Their plundering of our resources. <sighs> Zamorak be praised. Garajo be damned. In the year 45 of the Fifth Age, as promised, I'm recovering what time and death we have lost to the Garajo. Ugh. I have found methods to push faster and farther. My portals rip through floors like never before, and anything I leave behind is dumped as waste in the Garajo realm. <laughs> Let their families pay the price for their warriors slowing me down. Uh, I grin to think of the welcome they'll be given by their families when they return home. Zamrak be praised. In the year 79 of the Fifth Age. I pulse with it now. The power that seeps from the interplanar rift. It cannot be far. And we progress with exhilarating speed. I question whether my proximity to my master has meant that he lends his power to mine. Wait. If he has such influence on this world, could he not break through himself? I must not solly my purpose with doubts. The end is too close. Zamrak be praised. In the year uh, 118 of the Fifth Age. While I destroy and carve through the land with a satisfying ease, the areas behind me are becoming alarmingly unstable. Just today, one more collapsed and the interplanar shockwaves caused the earth about it to warp and corrupt. While this corruption is concerning, I refuse to be stopped. I move on and force the slaves who remain strong enough to come with me. I will not look back now. I will leave my problems in my wake. Zamrak be praised. In the year 137 of the Fifth Age. His whispers have turned to voices. I, 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 I. I'm close to him now. I am... Uh, I'm but a few years from the end, yet I... I... I fear the progress will be slowed. So much of my power is spent defensively, propping up the floors that threaten to crash down upon me. The floors above... Uh, uh, I think they're warped, out of control, dangerously unstable. I have trouble containing them, so instead I've chosen to protect just myself. That being said, though, what followers I left behind are now lost to construction. Uh, contra yeah, corruption. Uh, and I, I, I fear that a foe will rise, and even I cannot deal with. Still, I move on alone. And if I make it a little deeper, this area will serve as a challenge for anyone who tries to reach me. Samurai, guide me. In the year 165 of the Fifth Age. Oh, the end can't be far now. I feel the dark energy around me. It's, it's in... It's, um... Me, yeah, it's quite right. It's draining me. Um, shouldn't it be empowering me, though? Um... The voice, um... The voice? The voice... The voice tells me to stop writing. I, I, I... I, um... I, uh... I, 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 I've used up all my power getting this far. Or, or, or... Or was it ebbing through other means? Um... Hmm. The the voice tells me to push onwards anyway, so um I know my master will have the answers. I I I think I'm still my no I am I am yeah, yeah. I I I'm I, I myself. I'm still myself, honest. Uh I I must listen to the voices. I must I the voices they must they call they must must voices. I I I I, I must listen to the voices and push on. Voices. Zamarak, Zamarak. Zamorak be free, free, ooh, the voice says, must carry on, must keep going, must get deeper, go on, must keep, keep digging, getting close, I can feel it, it's pulsing, the voices tell me so. So there we go, people, that is all of the accounts from Bilrak left within Dungeon U itself, that was all the chronicles of Bilrak. 
There is one more thing, which I suppose loosely, very loosely covers Daemonheim and Bilwrak, and that is the Book of Zamorak that I mentioned earlier. This book, if you wish to find it and read it yourself, you can obtain from uh, Zamorak's follower in Edgeville. And you simply just need to play about with him and he will eventually give you the book if asked for. So, let's get started covering this book, Chapter 1. The First Step. My name is Moya, and I was wrong. I was led to believe that I was worthless, a failure, a mistake. Such were Lucian and my father's words, and they were all that I knew. I was a failed experiment, he claimed. The thaumaturgal offspring of Marjoran human. I'm not sure what my father hoped for from my conception, but I was certainly not it. Ironically though, it was on an errand from my father that I awakened. One that he considered worthless enough to give to me. I was tasked with hunting down a missing Marjorah deep within the heart of Daemonheim. I battled soldiers, crushed necromancers and uncovered a secret that my father would have killed for. In the heart of this dungeon, I found Bilrag, and we had much to discuss. I left Daemonheim and walked into a new world, stabbing across plains in a single stride. Gilinor melted away around me and I found myself in a world that was both wondrous and alien. It was formed from fire, mutable in state, in countless colours and designs that I lack the words to describe. It was a world of sheer chaos, one that defied the laws of nature. It, it was beautiful. It was at the heart of this world that I first met my lord. He did not command nor invite, he expected, commanding without a word or gesture and his presence alone was an instruction that I could not ignore. He never instructed or taught directly. Following him was difficult, for he crossed the tumultuous terrain with such ease that to keep up just exhausted me. He moved through the fire effortlessly, yet it blistered and seared my skin. There were times when I nearly gave up, but I didn't. I persevered, I endured. That was the lesson. I learned that life was not about waiting for salvation, or hiding from responsibility behind the edicts of another. It was about what I could take, and what I could hold on to. In those months, I found that I could overcome each obstacle he presented me, and that realization was intoxicating. With each obstacle removed from my path, I had become stronger in both body and spirit. He taught me to turn his newfound strength onto the world around me. I was already a gifted sorceress, but he showed me more. He showed me how to mould the fire to suit my needs, and how to summon it when I desire its power. Through him, I learned that I was worthy. More than that, I knew that he believed everyone to be worthy if they learned to push themselves hard enough though. So we left the world of fire and we crossed to a new world, young and primal. He took me to a valley and he showed me the newly forming village below. It was filled with tiny people, each of them moving about the place like ants. We watched them for days and each day I noticed the same people walking the same paths, the same routes simply growing older as they performed the same tasks. So that pretty much covers most of the Book of Zamorak, and it kind of covers Moya's interactions with Bilrak, albeit very slightly and loosely. But since Moya is still alive now in the Sixth Age and is at the Battle of Lumbridge, I thought it was worthy of covering. So with that said, that is pretty much everything you could possibly need to know. The only other thing left is a separate entire story known as Daemonheim Asunder. But that is lore for another time, as that is a long one in and of itself. So, I hope you all enjoyed this Daemonheim special. You should now know quite thoroughly all about Daemonheim as well as Bilrak and what Bilrak did during this time. 
so there we go. With that said, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will catch you all later. Have a good one, people.